All right, you've decided to homeschool. Yay. You may have even done some research. Maybe you've started even gathering resources or curriculum, but kind of wondering, okay, well, where do I go from here? What do I do next? Well, stay tuned. I want to give you some ideas and let you know how I plan and prepare for our next homeschool year. Right now, we're gearing up for this fall to be our ninth year of homeschooling, which seems Kind of crazy, I feel like we just started it not long ago. But I'm gonna have children in grades three, six, nine, 10, and 12. So this time next year, we're actually gonna have our first homeschool graduate, which is pretty amazing. So someone recently asked me like, how do you plan, how do you prep, what do you do to prepare for the homeschool year? And it got me thinking, I've kind of evolved some systems over the years to make this a little bit easier and I thought I would share that with you. Now there's a lot of different styles of homeschooling and whether you're a classical, unschooler, um, there's so many. Whatever you choose, just know that you don't have to stick with that, that it can change through the years and as you try different things. Maybe you want to unschool for like elementary and once the kids get to high school it's more classical or maybe it's the reverse so just keep in mind that you always have those options and you need to kind of find what works for your family that said i would start off with the basics which are math and english to me those are the two that i have at least in my experience feel like those need to be tailored to each child at the level they're at there's other things you know science socials i'll talk about in a minute but you can do those in groups or family style so this is the one you really need to focus on and figure out what level are your kids at and what program and approach do you want to use with them. One way if you're going to use curriculum and you want to look for curriculum to really cut the, the choices down somewhat is to choose do you want religious material or do you want secular because there seems to be quite a divide. There is far more religious material, at least I would say so, in the homeschooling world than the secular ones, but there are a number of secular ones as well. We've tried a number of language arts programs. Let's see, one, two, three. I wanna say we tried three, I believe it was three, before we finally settled on the good and the beautiful. And once we found that and it worked for us, we've just continued with that every year. So in terms of planning, the language arts is really easy for me. I just go to the next level for the next child little bit of difference with their grade 8 or level 8 because there is no level 8 and when they get to grade 12 because there is no high school 4. So um, I'll be sharing what my kids are going to be doing particularly for that grade 12 language arts in a coming video so stay tuned. I will have curriculum choices coming soon um, but it's been really easy for us once we found that curriculum and I really did want to find one that I could use right from the beginning till the end so that I could just roll on to the next level for the children. There was no gaps. There was no piecing things together with like phonics, writing. The Good and Beautiful just works really well for our family and it's all those topics in one. And there's no, um, I just reuse the material for each child unless new versions come up and sometimes I have updated them. But other than that, that's pretty straightforward for us. As for math, we started out with Saxon math, and we continued that up until last year. Last year, my oldest switched to Shorman math, and I since have had a second child switch. I think I'm still deciding I'm going to have a third child try it this coming year, and that's an online math program. But other than that, again, we just use Saxon, and so they just went up to the next level, and it was just really easy to plan in that way. I do keep on my computer like a five-year idea plan where I put at the top my children's names, the grades they're going to be in, and then on the left side usually I have the different subjects and I just kind of fill things in. So I have a general idea and when I have the language arts and the math, I just know they're going to do the next level. It's really easy just to plug those in, but it does give me an outlook and kind of that long-term plan. What am I looking for? Um, what resources? What do I need to keep in mind? And it's helpful to just open that and see, okay, this child's going to be in this grade and this is what I need to look up for them, like science or I have everything else, something like that. Along with that, I have a year spreadsheet that once I have made all the decisions about curriculum 
and what we're going to be doing i start filling it out week by week just the basics i don't put math or language arts in there because the kids just do their lessons and they roll on to the next lesson and we kind of know how long each level is going to take when it needs to start and how long it's going to take to end and we do finish every level we don't end them early but then i use the spreadsheet for things like adding in maybe a field trip maybe an art project uh, books i need to take out from the library read alouds resources and i start filling in every week so that i have a really good idea of how the year is going to go but it's not so specific and set in stone that i can't change anything that's why I like the Excel ones because I can move things around like oh, I'm going to put this down a week or even through the year like oh we got behind I'm going to move this down. It just seems to work well like that for me. All right then other subjects. So let's say science. Um, the first year we started homeschooling I just kind of went with what my children were interested in. They were let's see we had a baby, a toddler, grade one, grade two, and grade four. And they were interested in animals. And so we just studied animals that first year for science. And after that, I asked them what they were interested in the next year. I can't remember what we did the next year. Maybe it was space? Possibly. But we just continued on those first few years. I would ask them what they're interested in and I would choose the curriculum or the material that would work for that. Now that we've gone like the whole way through kind of all the science topics, I'm just continuing to rotate in the same order. So this coming year we'll be doing animals again because my youngest two who weren't really aware or involved with what was going on, now they get to do animals. And next year if we had done, I believe astronomy, like I said, we'll do that again in the next year. And I just kind of cycle through so that all my children have gone through kind of the basic areas of science and then they move on on their own once they get to grade eight and they do their own science and what interests them and they follow their path that way. As far as history goes, we started with the story of the world. That's what was recommended to me and I thought, well, I'll give it a try. It seemed to look good and it worked. We originally, or my original plan was to do the four volumes of story of the world and then move on to like the good and the beautiful and do their four years and then move on to like the history of mystery and do their years so that the kids would get a varied experience with history and different perspectives. However, that's really expensive. <laughs> and I found that because I have kids just joining in as they got older and kids kind of moving out as they moved on to doing history on their own, again, around that grade eight level, um, we've just stuck with the story of the world. So we're on our second round through story of the world. We just finished the second volume. So we've done the first twice, the second twice, the third once, and the fourth once. And I'm just continuing on, again, so that the younger kids who miss maybe the first book or the second book, they're getting that now. And we're just continuing on in cycles. We are Canadian, and so I actually do a five-year cycle. We do the four years of Story of the World, and then we do a year of Canadian history. We've done this twice because I actually did one let's see when was it i think it was between volume two and three i decided to do canada for a few reasons and then we kind of jumped back to story of the world but now we just follow the four years and then do a year of canada so we've done it twice canada i have an entire playlist of resources um books music art projects uh read alouds geography papers, I mean everything you could think of. And I have that as a playlist on my YouTube channel, which I'll link the link up top if you want to see that playlist. So many ideas for Canadian resources. So that's what we do with history. And so again, it's really easy now for me just to kind of, in those five-year plan things, just to plug in, okay, we we're doing two this year. Well, we're going to do Story of the World Volume 3 next year, and then Volume 4, and then it's Canada again. So in terms of planning, again, that makes it so simple. Electives are a little bit different. So we do um, geography, we do health, we do farm anatomy. I think those are like the three main that we do and we do our read alouds. I tried to choose read alouds that fit with our history, 
with our science, particularly the science for the younger kids, or maybe a classic or a more well-known book. And I plug those in as they relate to what we're learning about. So for geography, we really do love the Great World Adventure, which is by the Great Canadian Adventure. It's a little confusing. Um, and so I've just been working through the units that they have. I choose them based on what goes along best with our story of the world. And so um, I've kind of followed as best as I can with the exception of maybe what a child is really interested in, like we did Japan one year. I followed along with what goes along with the history and what's available and I just keep doing new units. We have not done all of their units yet, so I'm just rotating through. I plan two a year. We choose two that seem to fit or the kids are really interested in. And again, it just makes it really simple. Health is a bit of an interesting one. I really like the what to do when books. They're geared more for six to 12 year olds though. So I kind of did the first round with my older kids and I just started doing another round with my younger kids. Books like what to do, what, uh, what to do when you grumble, what to do when it's not fair, what to do when you, what to do when your temper flares. Those are all some really helpful books and they have good skills. And so it's been kind of a reminder for my older kids, but it's mostly for my younger kids. I'm trying to think what other health we've done. Maturation, we kind of do as the children need to be introduced to it as they're age appropriate. The farm anatomy, we just do some for a year, stop, and then pick it back up in the next year. Once we're finished going through that book, I'm not sure what will take the place of that, but it's probably gonna be another two years before we finish that book. So I don't really have that planned, but we'll see what comes up. So once I know what I'm looking for in terms of curriculum and resources, then I start to actually look for them. For some of the high school level courses, I have to do more investigation into like, I've never used the science before. How does it work? What do I need? But for the ones that we've used before, I often have most of it. If there's anything I do need, springtime is the best time to get sales because that's when the homeschool conventions typically are happening. And many places, homeschool stores offer discounts even if you're not at the convention. Also, as kind of spring ends, summer starts, people are selling off their curriculum so you can get discounted curriculum at that time. I try to print a lot of my stuff kind of April, May-ish because I do have a large garden and once the garden goes in that takes up a lot of my time. So I try to print and bind and prep as much as I can as early on as I can. So sometime near the end of summer I'll get all the school stuff out. I will get the kids to get their homeschool bins out and take out the treasures they've collected you know from the last year empty it out, sanitize it all. I'll go through and put as much of their homeschool stuff in their bins for them. I have a shelf where I keep the, the books, like the answer keys and the teacher books that I'm currently using. So I'll pull everything down and put that on the shelf and get it all ready. I'll make sure that I've had a look through curriculum if it's a new curriculum to me and kind of have a good grasp on how the flow is gonna work and what I need to do, what I need to prep my child in or maybe something to clarify before they start. And then we're really ready to go. I'm sitting in what we call our like homeschool room right now, but it's not like a traditional classroom. Um, you know, make sure it's tidy, make sure we have the basics, pencils, pens, erasers, tape, kids always want tape, um, pencil sharpener, printers working, scissors, pen, or coloring markers, those kinds of things. And really we're just ready to go and that's what we do. I hope I've addressed some questions and I've helped to give you an idea of how you can prepare for the new homeschool year. Like I said, it's just kind of become second nature to me that, you know, over winter I start thinking about what the kids are going to be doing. In the spring I'm looking for resources and making decisions. In the summer I'm making sure everything is printed and planned and ready to go. And in the fall we're troubleshooting as we start because there's always something I've forgotten or something we don't maybe have a piece for always without fail no matter how much I plan sometimes that happens and that's okay that's just life hopefully though this has given you some ideas and if you have any questions leave them in the comment section down below otherwise I hope this finds you having a great day take care